this engine mountain coming earlier today uh, it's got a lug broken off it lug goes onto there like that lug lines up nice and nice and neat um, it's made of aluminium uh, people think you can just put a bit snotty weld on there and fasten that bit back on it doesn't work that way what you've got to do you've got to grind all this away cut it all back to clean metal build the lug up solid uh, you drill it and tap it the centre point of that hole is critical uh, so all I have to do I'll have to make a make a small jig for it and use those two holes there to pick up that hole with I'll mark them two holes with a transfer punch onto a bit of metal then when I've welded it up I can mount it on my milling machine and drill that hole with a, a decent degree of accuracy so the first thing I'll have to do is find out how I'm going to mount it onto the milling machine there's nothing much parallel I think those two points there those two points there are parallel to that side so I'll be able to mount something onto there hold it that way somehow and then we'll make a we'll make a piece for that the welding up's the easy bit it's the machining back and putting the, putting the thread back in it's the, the hard bit I mean, I've found a, a suitable bit of plate what we'll do, we'll mark those two holes drill them and we'll put, we can bolt that on, mark the other one and then we'll have something to, to drill it off accurately once it's been welded transfer punch is a good fit in that hole so we'll do that one first nice mark, so we'll drill that one get a good fitting bolt to go through there this should be 8 mil. Right, we've got one, one point located there with a good fitting nut and bolt. We'll mark this one with a transfer punch, the same. Nice mark, so we can drill that one, bolt this on, get the other one mark. Again, we'll use what you know, we got that line up with nice and accurate, certainly accurate enough for what we're doing. Yep, there a drill. It's actually a 10mm thread that, and that's an 8.5mm transfer punch, and the tapping drill for 10mm is 8.5 so uh, it's looking not too bad. That's a, it's going to pick the centre up fairly accurately. All we'll do, a nice pop mark, I'll drill a hole in there, and then we can use this as a drilling jig once it's welded. I'll also need to measure the distance between that face and the plate because that will have to be machined once it's welded. Don't use your fingers because it will hurt you. I'm going to drill that hole 8.5 because that's a tapping drill size for 10mm and when we come to machine it all we've got to do is put a 8.5mm drill located in that hole and drill straight down. I always use a centre drill first Right, 
we've got one little plate bolted back on. That's what 8.5 mil transfer punch, and that goes so nice. So we'll be able to weld that up then, re it and remachine it. What I could do, I could put an 8.5 mil pin in there and weld it on the pin and put a heli coil in. But I'm gonna machine all that out, grind it all out, weld it up, weld it up solid, and then re-drill and re-top the hole. Screw what jig onto there. I just measure the height between this plate and the bottom. Keeping the vernier straight. Four and eighty thou. So I write four eighty on there so I don't don't forget. That's a scrap I got Tom Lipton. I use it all the time. It's an excellent bit of gear. We'll go up to what I call a messy shop now and do some damage to that with a rotary burr, warm it up and weld it. When you're welding aluminium, it's no good pissing about trying to clean the wire brush. You've got to get the surface corrosion off the surface film or it won't weld. The easiest way to do it is a carbide cutter and a die grinder. Let's get it right back to clean metal like that. If it's not clean metal, you're wasting your time. Let's look at that and see what sort of what I mean by clean. Right, that's what we mean by clean, nice, bright, clean metal all the way around. Any corrosion in there, once you start to weld, it'll just explode. Right, we're getting ready to weld it. I've got my main earth clamp on the small rotating table I use. Now, between the table and the job, I've got a bit of heavy copper cable clamped on which means I can move this around to weld it and still make sure I've got a good earth. I'm not having to lie on the earth with the job touching the table. A good earth is imperative. Right, we'll set it up, warm it up, and see if we can get some weld material into it. I'll be welding this with a 5% silicon rod, because it's a casting. Extrusions, you weld with a 5% magnesium rod, but you use silicon for casting. There's no hard and fast rules, but that's what I use and it works. Treat the, treat the casting with a propane torch. That will boil any last bits of grease or oil with it. You also need a good bit of paint. It stays on the welding average. Spent a bit of time devising that of setting it up. Um, actually, I had four four flat points here, four holes. So I've used those on an angle plate. I've managed to get one bolt straight through and a big J clamp on it. It's got it's got a decent hole. It's just aluminium. All I've got to do is machine that flat and drill and tap one hole. There's a shot from the angle. I've got two two 11 mm drills which are a good fit in those two holes, rest on top of the angle plate which gets it somewhere in the ballpark 
I put a clock gauge on, it's how far away it actually is. This clock gauge, it's a federal clock gauge, it was sent to us by a guy called Charlie Moore. I use it quite a bit. It's an accurate one, very accurate. I'll just zero it. That's within two, that's within a thousand and a half. That way. And the same that way, that's more than, more than accurate enough for what it's going to be. It's got a 10 mil hole, drilled and tapped through there, it goes to a steel engine mountain, has plenty of, plenty of tolerance on the hole, so we're happy with that. But we can always get a bit better though, can't we? Right, so nobody can see I didn't try. Right, we're a decent sized milling cutter in there. It's touched off on there. So we need to go up. My Z axis is zero. We need to go up half an inch, half an inch, 480 thou. Take it gentle because it's not exactly a rigid, rigid setup. Hey. Right. That's tightened up. So now we're going to find the centre of that hole. Drill it at 8.5 and put a top straight through it. There's a few ways of indicating the centre of that hole. All I've done, I've put the 8.5 mil transfer punch in. I'm just going to line it up by eye, which will be more than that straight in there. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll lock the table off at that straight in with the 8.5 mil tap and drill. Let, oops, in with the top. Okay, we've got my 8.5mm tap and drill. This one's actually 86 so it should just whisk by the hole on the way through. Which it is. A little bit of oil won't hurt anything. With the metal that's coming out all well metal. We'll put all the threads out right back and weld it up solid. Before I put the riser block on this milling machine, there's no way you could have done this job. There just wasn't enough room. Okay, so we can take the plate off now and put our 10 mil tap in. A bit of, a little bit of tapping compound. Right. See how it's clamped, how it's clamped down. One bolt through there and a couple of drills just to just to line it up. We'll take it up to our shop and clean it up with a die grinder. Right, that's the, the finished repair, cleaned up. You can see the metal is nice and solid, no blow holes in it. Quite a reasonable repair. 
guarantee it won't come off. In fact, you put a bit more metal in, build it up a bit more, made it a bit stronger. Because uh, there's plenty, there's no clearance issues on this part here. So I've just reinforced it a little bit. There's actually a witness mark there, the original depth. We're just touching that so it's it's right, it's in the right place at the right depth. I'm sure I'll be happy with that. Probably only pierces for the bastard. <laughs> 